Perceptions of others are largely based on outward appearance. A first impression of the human face, more than any other physical feature, will shape our opinions of those around us. Are they happy or sad? Confident or insecure? Untrustworthy or dependable? Ultimately, how we are perceived will influence the outcome of our lives. The mission of the Face to Face Project is to express the reality of the power of art and medicine to heal the body and nourish the soul. Studio in Kamenati Artists, in partnership with the Craniofacial Program at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, painted intimate portraits of children with craniofacial conditions to help them see themselves in a different light. The face-to-face -face project was born of a deep friendship and common passion for art and medicine between world-renowned artist Nelson Shanks, founder of Studio Incominati, School for Contemporary Realist Art, and Dr. Linton Whitaker, founder of the craniofacial program at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. In the world of art, Nelson Shanks is hailed as a true master and a penetrating interpreter of the human condition. His commissions include some of the most influential leaders of our time. In 2002, Nelson and his wife Leona founded Studio Incominati in Philadelphia. For more than a decade, Studio Incominati has provided a dynamic learning environment to produce highly skilled artists who call upon their abilities to create art with an unparalleled depth of mastery and meaning. This project was an experimental project in England some years ago. My great friend Dr. Linton Whitaker brought this to my attention and in that we're constantly talking about aesthetics between the two of us, the plastic surgeon, the artist, and it finally evolved into discussions about how to go about actually realizing the painting of these children and the beneficial effects that it could have. Our daughter Paige was born on July 2nd, 2001, and she was diagnosed with Pfeiffer syndrome. When we knew something was wrong from the doctor's reaction right away and we were pretty devastated. We really were struggling with um, how we were going to cope with such a comprehensive set of syndromes. Pfeiffer syndrome is a series of issues you need to deal with. We were really very frightened in the beginning. I really thought that we would lose her. I think what people should know when they look at the portrait that I did of Paige is that things are possible. She radiates that hope. She radiates a sense of life, that you need to take a chance and trust the people around you to become a better person. And she does that. She's trusted her parents, her doctors, and, and me as an artist. When you see a child that is struggling and be happy amidst all of the, the difficult things that they're going through, to me, that's beauty. And I want to be able to capture that in my own work. 
We feel really blessed that the Children's Hospital was geared up for this, both as a medical team and just from an emotional and support standpoint, it really has been the right place to be. Right, and Dr. Bartlett made her beautiful. I have to say that. He didn't just fix her. He, uh, he made her beautiful. I'm going to cry again. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's not an angry child. She's not bitter. She knows everybody's different, and she has a good attitude about life. She's accepted who she is, and she has a good attitude about herself. That really empowers her to move forward. In the late 60s, we were operating on children with clefts, cleft lip, cleft palate, and with other problems around the face. But there seemed to be nothing, and there was nothing, that could be done about the other more major problems that involve the entire face. After finishing my training in June of 1971, I had the good fortune to attend the first conference given by Paul Tessier the person who started this whole field from Paris, France, and it was the most astounding thing I'd ever seen. And so I said, that's it. That's the answer to these problems that I've been seeing. And so we were one of the first in the country, in the United States, to start the program. CHOP is certainly a leader in the treatment of craniofacial problems. Through the coordinated efforts of a multi-specialty clinic, the in-hospital care, I know at each step, CHOP is very inclusive and comprehensive in dealing with the psychosocial aspects of the family as it relates to the patient's care. When a patient is first seen, many times I've seen families really uh, kind of staggered by this information about what needs to be done. Physically, there can be uh, distinct problems of any of the functional parts of the face, the eyes, the nose, breathing, mouth, chewing. But that generally is not the most important problem. Most important problem is the psychological aspect of it and the desire to look normal or as normal as possible. Ian was born on June 15th, 2001. Within a couple of days, we learned that at Pennsylvania Hospital where he was born, they suspected he had Mobius syndrome and he was transferred to Children's Hospital where they confirmed that diagnosis. Mobius syndrome is the paralysis of various craniofacial nerves. It manifests itself in an inability to smile as most people would and his eyes don't move laterally. The first time I met Ian, I was very nervous to meet him. Uh, I had a certain expectation of who Ian was going to be. Ian walked into the room with his mother and father and his brother Andrew and uh, immediately changed my perception of who he was going to be. He turned out to be very confident, very intelligent, very well read, a little intimidating for me. Having read the uh, Iliad and Odyssey, and he's only 11 years old, I felt that the challenge was going to be how to get into Ian's mindset. When he first got up and sat down and, and, and started posing for me, it was hard to tell if Ian was happy or irritated. Uh, I'm sure he didn't like the idea of sitting for hours at a time. But after really getting to know him, I picked up on his expressions. The more time I spent with Ian, the more I felt like I really knew who he was. What interested me so much in the face-to-face -face program was not so much to do a portrait of somebody with a facial irregularity, but to paint the soul of the person, the individual. Here at Incominati, we're trained to start with a blank canvas. And we really pour our energy into those first brush strokes. Studio Incominati gave me the tools to be able to work from life, which distinguishes it from many art schools. And that's one of the advantages to working from life, is getting to know the person. Hopefully at the end that will come through the final painting. Ian's Chinese middle name means perseverance, and he has had to go through a lot. And it's clearly paying off. It's more than we wish he had to go through, but we're very glad that, he's, that he has the care that he needs and that he has the opportunity to get the best out of 
many, many skills that he has. And he's funny. And he's funny. He is funny. <laughs> the psychological aspects of appearance are critically important. The initial beliefs from the 1950s and 1960s were that our appearance really didn't matter very much. And yet since that time, we've had this body of research that has told us that our appearance influences our daily lives in a countless number of ways. And we see this experience across the lifespan. When a child is brought to us as an infant with a craniofacial deformity, we have to look at that child not only and look at their immediate needs, but we have to look at their long-term needs. Our goal is really to get them through childhood and adolescence so that they can become and integrate in society when they, when they graduate from our program, that they can not always look around and think, is somebody looking at me or noticing me or judging me by my appearance? And for many of our children, that is a reality. And I'm, I'm confident that we can do that to the vast majority of our patients that we see now in infancy. Isaiah Lewis is born June 19, 2004. Chichikala syndrome is a facial deformity. It can cause partial hearing loss, partial vision loss. I have a family genetics of Chichikala syndrome. I grew up with the same condition that my son has. Teaching my son about it, he has to have a different attitude about growing up. So I'm trying to teach my son that, but you gotta stay up and positive and be who you are. Chichikalans are not. The first time I met them, Isaiah and his dad, Keith, came in. I kind of joke, in that first meeting, we all sort of sat down and were facing each other, and you got three guys who don't talk very much, you know, so, yeah, just, it wasn't, there wasn't a whole lot to talk about at first, even though we were all trying. <laughs> I did the best I could. I, I brought some toys with me, and I, I gave them to Isaiah, and I think both he and his dad appreciated that. With Isaiah, what impressed me was just how normal of a kid he is. And you could see that he just has a really great uh, rapport with his dad. Seeing that the family dynamics was really encouraging. And the first time his whole family came in, so it was, it was Isaiah and his, his dad, his mom, and his younger sister. And it's kind of interesting because, you know, his dad has the same condition and so does his younger sister. Looking past the facial condition and seeing him for who he truly is, is the job of the artist. You know, I certainly want to incorporate a positive outlook on him. So having him kind of looking up and off into the future in the, in the painting certainly signifies that. And it's just really about seeing the best in him. Studio Kaminati is definitely one of the top traditional painting schools in the world, really. It's a school, it's almost like a second family. Um, we're small, but it's, it's a place where people who are all interested in the same endeavor, we come together five, six, seven days a week and we study and we train. We're studying under this master painter. It's also a place where we, we're learning from each other. And we're learning these very traditional skills so that we can go out in the world and paint what we see around us to create paintings that have a very high level of craft. He is faced with many challenges, but he's done a great job with Dad's help, my help. I wasn't born with Treacher Collins Syndrome, but learning about it through Children's Hospital, I feel more comfortable teaching Isaiah what I do know and helping him to be able to just enjoy life every day. He's getting into art ever since we started this process with the portrait. He's very excited about art now. Yeah. He's taking us experience. He's taking it as an adventure, just expanding with it. He's excited. He's telling everybody. <laughs> When anyone has a, a facial difference, they often fear other people looking at them. When a child is sitting for a portrait, an artist has to closely examine their face and their body, who they are. And the difference is that the artist is looking to capture who they are. The difference is really put into context, and the spirit and the soul of the child is able to shine through. Brittany Gore was born September 29th, 1998 with multiple craniofacial anomalies. When we first had Brittany, there was a lot of uncertainty. So I remember thinking, well, this is what I need to deal with. I, I need to step up. This is real. For whatever reason, I'm being given this really special baby with a special man. We have our special family, and I guess that's when the reality sunk in that you're a mom, a wife, 
this is what needs to be done and you just need to roll with it. Life is a work in progress and just like our painting, we as individuals develop throughout life and it's just absolutely fascinating to watch these children develop over time. My little girl Brittany has said that she wants to be a public speaker. She wants to tell stories, her stories. She wants to help people and teach about life's experiences through her own personal experience. She is so positive and she feels so blessed. Brittany is proof that inner beauty overrides everything else. The face-to-face -face project has been a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for all of us. It's an experience that Brittany's gonna take with her for the rest of her life. This is how God made me. I like who I am. The angel in the paint, it's really about this little girl, I believe, that is a woman, and this angel looking down on her. I actually do see myself as that little girl. The angel is always watching over me. The children felt that the artists were truly interested in them as a person. The idea that the world sees them as a person of value, I think, is very meaningful. The great success of the portrait project is that when people viewed the portraits, that they would be able to see beyond the difference in the child's face and to really learn something about what they really hope to accomplish with their lives, and that they are a person of value, of beauty, and of great worth. The most beautiful thing about the project is what one of our patients have already told us that, you know, they never thought of themselves as being portrait worthy. Only beautiful people, only successful people, only heroes had their portraits painted. But for someone to actually ask them, can I paint a picture of you? It's just an incredible thing that this portrait project has brought to those children. Art can really play a healing role. The experience for all of us who have worked on the face-to-face -face project, the families, the artists from Studio and Kamenati, and the medical professionals from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia has been nothing short of inspiring. This project was designed to educate people about craniofacial conditions and the challenges that children and families face, as well as to remind each of us about the very real psychological issues that we all face related to our appearance to share this powerful story, not just locally, but to a larger audience as well. I really hope that we are in a position where we can continue the project in the future. Doing so will allow us to have more children and more artists participate as we strive to communicate that just because someone looks different on the outside doesn't mean that inside they are a fundamentally different person. In reality, they share the same interests and goals and dreams as all of us.